Hey, good morning everyone, TrackMan44 here. Yes, the struggle is real. <laughs> the worst thing about having a sawmill and sawing a doggone lumber is all these stacking strips that you gotta stay on top of. I don't care, you can make 40 or 50 of them, you know, you can make 150 of them. And every time you turn around, you're out of stacking strips. So, you know, there's nothing better to do on a nice chilly morning than to uh, get some old scrap material, you know, and go ahead and make a bunch more stacking strips. So, that's what I've been doing. See a little bit of them over right there. Got a little pile here against this little uh, flywheel engine. Got a few more boards that are of questionable quality right there on the roll around work table that we're gonna go ahead and slide through and make these three quarter inch by four foot long stacking strips. And what we do, in addition to a 48 inch, in addition to 48 inch, I cut a couple, a lot of smaller, just on the scrap pieces that don't have a lot of good material. I'll make 12 inch strips out of them. Of course, occasionally you have to set stuff, you know, out, off by its side. Uh, just singular stacks of individual boards, and I just like the 12 inch board, uh, the 12 inch stacking strip for that particular application. Right now, I had to shut it down because Mo Craftsman uh, saw run low on a pretty long cord, kind of overheated. So I got to blow a little air in there and blow the sawdust out and kind of get it to cool down, reset off of its overload. And anytime I'm getting into a lot of heavy sawing, I always blow it out before I get started, which I did. And also um, about 20 minutes or so, every 20 minutes or so, I go ahead and shut it down because I can just feel that it's about ready to trip the overload. I didn't catch it quite early enough this time. It's definitely a little bit warm, but it's got that external reset overload on these particular saws from Craftsman. And I just have to let it set a little bit, blow that dust out of there, and it'll be all right for too awfully long. And you know, a lot of guys don't realize these things here, most of them that come from, from Sears that are less than 30 years old, can be, uh, you can just pull the electrical cover in there and you can change from 115 volt to 230 volt just by merely uh, relocating, I think there's only one wire, it might be two, I don't know. But essentially what you have to do is you have to, uh, you're changing a series wound winding into a parallel wound winding by switching that wire. Because in series, going across two loads cuts the voltage in half. So by running it in series, you can actually power the motor with 230 volts. But you don't have to know any of that stuff because it has a nomenclature on there that tells you 115 here, 220 right there, not a big deal. And the, uh, the amp draw, the wattage consumption is exactly the same on 115 volts versus 230 volt, but the amperage draw is cut in half on the 230 volt. And the amperage draw is where we're concerned when it comes to overheating the motors because higher the amperage, the more heat you generate in the motor windings, and the quicker it'll heat up the overload and trip the, uh, the internal overload with the external reset. In other words, the voltage and the amperage is an in for inverse proportion. Just pick numbers here. If you have a motor that runs 10 amps at 115 volt, if you run 230 volt, it's going to draw 5 amps. So your motor's going to run cooler. The wattage will be exactly the same because volts times amps equals watts. So it doesn't matter what voltage you're running, you multiply it by the amperage and it's going to equal exactly the same wattage. So anyway, hey man, I'm going to see if this thing cool down and go back to work.
Well, that's it for this bundle of sack of strips. Uh, finishing up with those little 12 inch just of scraps, you know. I got about 100 and 150, 180 of uh, the four footers. Then I got these little 12 inch here. Then I got a bunch more short scraps. Uh, some of the four footers that broke. I'm going to cut those into 12 inch pieces too. And if you can tell, uh, that's definitely the wrong blade on there. I've actually got a finish, uh, finish cutting, uh, a finish cut blade on it, not a rip blade at all. And this thing is dull as can be. So you can pull it. You can hear it pulling down. You can see the blue smoke coming off of it. You know, it might even. It's just pretty dull, but uh, no matter, you know, it, get, it, it got done what needed to get done. And uh, I could saw these on the bandsaw, you know, but it's not nearly as convenient, not nearly as easy to do, as I figured out, than, to, than it is to do it in here on the uh, on the radio arm saw like this right here. Plus, it's nice, it's shirt sleeve weather in here. Outside, i got to be wearing a coat, walking around in the mud, <laughs> you know, and uh, dealing with much longer, more aggravating pieces. In here, I've got everything much more under control. So uh, outside, just a little bit of finishing up stuff to do. Uh, I think we're wrapping this one up with this Track Man 44. And I'm out of here, guys.